These are the biochemical reactions that make up what we call glycolysis. Glycolysis starts with a glucose molecule, which is shown here. It is important to know that glucose is a six carbon molecule, which is labeled numerically like this, one through six. It is important to remember this numbering scheme since it will help you remember the name and structures of the remaining molecules in glycolysis. I'll show you what I mean. So the first reaction in glycolysis is the conversion of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme hexokinase. Let's take a side note here. So do you notice the word kinase in hexokinase? Well, kinases are enzymes that catalyze the transfer of phosphate molecules. Remember this because there are four different kinases in glycolysis that facilitate the transfer of a phosphate molecule. In the first reaction, hexokinase takes a phosphate from ATP and attaches it to the 6 carbon of glucose, which is why the product of this reaction turns out to be glucose 6-phosphate. And as a result, ATP is converted to adenosine diphosphate, or ADP. In the next reaction, glucose 6-phosphate is acted upon by the enzyme phosphoglucose isomerase. This reaction just involves the moving of atoms or moving around of structures. This is what isomerases do. They rearrange molecules to produce an isomer. So the product of this reaction is fructose 6-phosphate. Notice that there was no adding or taking away of atoms, just rearranging the glucose hexagon shape into a fructose pentagon. And the phosphate remains at the sixth carbon. In the next reaction, fructose 6-phosphate undergoes a reaction with phosphofructokinase 1. Again, another kinase so we know there will be a transfer of a phosphate molecule. The phosphate molecule again comes from ATP and is attached to the first carbon of the substrate, creating fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, because now we have a phosphate molecule at both the first and the sixth carbons. This is the last energy requiring step of glycolysis and the last step of the preparation or investment phase. Next, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate gets split into two molecules catalyzed by the enzyme aldolase. It either becomes dihydroxyacetone phosphate or glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. These two molecules are isomers of each other. And there is an enzyme that keeps these two molecules in equilibrium, which is called triose phosphate isomerase. And like we talked about before, this enzyme, which is also an isomerase, does not add or take away atoms. It just changes the structure. In the complete glycolysis pathway, the molecule that is utilized fully is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And so from this point forward, you should think of eventually getting two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate from one molecule of glucose. The next step is catalyzed by an enzyme called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. This enzyme catalyzes the first oxidation reduction reaction of glycolysis. In this reaction, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. To simplify things, in order to help you remember this step and the different names of things, it might help for you to remember that there's going to be a movement of hydrogen at this step. And the way I remember this step is that the enzyme has the word dehydrogen in its name. So I thought of this as the movement of hydrogen. In this case, hydrogen is moved from glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to an NAD molecule to give you NADH. At the same time, an inorganic phosphate is added to the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate at the first carbon which is why we call the product of this reaction 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. This molecule then goes on to the next step of glycolysis and is catalyzed by phosphoglycerate kinase. And that's right, you guessed it, this step involves the movement of a phosphate molecule. But instead of moving a phosphate onto our substrate, we actually take a phosphate from the first carbon of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate in order to make ATP. And so, we are left with the product of this reaction, which is 3-phosphoglycerate. In the next reaction, 3-phosphoglycerate is acted upon by phosphoglycerate mutase to give the product 2-phosphoglycerate. You could easily remember this step by remembering that mutase enzymes such as this one mutates molecules, and so only the structure will change. And in this case, the mutation that takes place is that the phosphate is moved from the third to the second carbon. Next, 2-phosphoglycerate is catalyzed to phosphoenolpyruvate by the enzyme enolase. Now this is easy to remember because both the enzyme and the product contain the word enol. In this step, water is also produced. The final step of glycolysis takes phosphoenolpyruvate and catalyzes it to pyruvate. 
This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate kinase. Again, another easy step to remember, because this is the last energy forming step of glycolysis, and it should be intuitive to figure out that ATP is made from ADP from the transfer of this phosphate molecule. And that is it. That is the entire biochemical reaction of glycolysis.